Welcome back to Practically Creative. This is Melissa. Um, today I am doing something a little bit different. I've done applique before using coloring pages. And today we're going to work on one that I designed myself. Um, I have seen a spool quilt somewhere along the way. And I decided that I wanted to make one for me. I will put a copy of the pattern and the cutting directions, which I have written there in the um, description box below. But I'm going to show you kind of my thought process and how I put stuff like this together. So let's switch cameras. And we are going to follow along and do this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I've cut myself a piece of background fabric. But I don't know for sure if I want to do three, four, five, however many spools on here. But this is a piece of sheet. And since it's an experiment, I'm not worried about using wonderful fabric. And I've got my iron sitting over here beside me so that I have room to work on it. I folded my background fabric into four. And then I have a pile of little strips of fabric that I'm going to use for some of this. So let's bring those over in here for you so you can see them. Now I am decided that I'm going to make my spools uh, four inches tall by two and a half inches wide. And I have all of my little pieces cut out already so that I can put them down and play as I go. So I'm going to start here with unfolding my fabric and ironing them the way I did also gave me a bit of a dividing line so I know where I want to work at. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my four pieces of fabric for my spools themselves and just kind of center them on each of the sections. And right now I'm not worried about everything being even or not, I'm just laying them down. See at least two of them, so let's work on two at a time. So I have my white down here and I chose a green to go as the bottom of the spool. Move this spool up some. And then I'm going to put the little spool cap up here at the top. This isn't glued and glued down or anything yet. I'm just laying it out. As we're just going to lay the colored pieces across the spools, and I cut more than I need, obviously. And I designed mine to do <clears throat> three colors across each spool. You can do more or less, depending on what appeals to you. And the one constant that I know I want is I want one of these vibrant greens in each one. There are, I'm trying to move this to where you guys can see it. Okay, so here are my little spools laid out. And then all I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to draw a line here just to tell myself where to cut them.
and lay the piece right back down where I picked it up from. And now that that part is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the good old-fashioned school glue. You could do this with heat and bond light or anything you like, but I just thought, let's just do it with glue so that it's done and easy. I'm just putting a very tiny little bit of glue on the bottom or on the back side of the fabric and then laying it down. This I'm not going to pick up and move again at all, but I am going to put some glue under bottom paper and the top one. And the nice thing about using regular glue, is if you get it a little bit off, you can just slide it over. Put a drop of glue. And you can move it around as much as you need to. <clears throat> Come on, Glenn. <clears throat> okay, now that I've got everything glued down, I'm going to take my iron and set it right on top of it. Mm. 
This is my version of using up all my scraps. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take our iron and just set it down and attach that heat and bond to the back of each of those pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we want to start with the green piece. I don't want to keep it even. <clears throat> so I want to keep it even across the bottom here. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying down my ruler. And I'm going to peel the paper off the back of this piece of heat and bond. And you can tell that there's shiny on the back of that. And once that's down there, then I'm going to put the bulk of the spool. Peeling the paper off of it. I'm going to set that down so that it's even on both sides. And then I'll set the top down. I mean to scoot you. And then I want to put the little top pin of my thread spool down. And because it's a half inch by a half inch, it doesn't matter which way I turn that. And then I'm going to use my iron to just put all those pieces in place. <clears throat> and then before I peel these, I'm going to lay them down and I'm going to mark them like I did the others before. With my little pen. Cut off that edge.
Then I'll take my iron and just set them down. <clears throat> okay, so that's two of them done. One. I didn't peel the paper. Helps if you peel the paper. <clears throat> okay, so that's two of these done. One is done with glue and one is done with heat and bond. Neither one of them is done all the way to the edges. I didn't think that that was necessary because I am going to be sewing this down in free motion applicating it. And I like the look of the little fray there, but I'll probably cut it off before I start sewing this down. But I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these glued down off camera. And then I'll come back and show you what we do with the applique portion of this. So now I have put all of my little applique spools of thread on here. And I'm going to let you guys guess which one is done with glue. I did the other three with some heat and bond scraps that I have. And in my next video, I will show you how I bat this, baste it, and then free motion applique it. But I wanted to show you how this goes together. And you don't have to use the same color combination I did. I just dug through the, the scrap bag that I have sitting here, my scrap bag of Shane. And I didn't end up using all the little pieces that I cut, but I did end up using up a good bit of my little piece of heat and bond that's scrap. So that was bonus. All right, guys, you have a great day. I will put a copy of this down in the bottom for you. Um, I'll make it a link as a Google Doc, I think, uh, so that you guys can download this pattern if you want to. You don't have to. And I will give you my cutting directions as a bonus. All right, have a great day. Thank you for watching.